Jesus. You fucking beauty. And here we go. It's the comic, 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 comic book bullies. Man, you come right out of a comic book. Welcome back to the Comic Book Bullies with Nerd's New Bully. I'm your host, Lee Ray, a.k.a. A-B-A-C-A-B-B, uh, with my co-host. Yeah, this is Eli, a.k.a. Nightwolf. You you really went there? Uh, yeah, you got him, man. Rep it. <laughs> it's like me going Black Falcon. I mean, you just can't go there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we're back with another episode. And yeah, we're just going to jump into it. Like I said, we got a bunch of topics we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about uh Mortal Kombat, which is everybody talking about right now. We're gonna talk about the Falcon Winter Soldier episode six, which is the finale of it. Talk about some Shang Chi, talk about some comics, maybe video game section, depending on, on my mood, and we'll go from there. Uh if I sound differently, it's because right before we started recording, I broke my mic. So I blame Eli for that. But yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got Leroy's clone in here now. <laughs> so hopefully we don't know how this show is going to go but we're just going to just go with it with that uh and we'll do that so i guess the first thing we're going to do eli is uh say rest in peace to shock g oh yeah, yeah. now I, I i actually changed my uh facebook profile to shock g a lot of people are like who the hell is that what is that <laughs> like because they're but we like i said and this is weird we keep talking about rappers this past on like they were talking about dmx two weeks ago which he just had a uh funeral what today Yesterday? Or yeah, this weekend, yeah. Yeah, this weekend, something like that was close. They were talking about Black Friday, we were talking about Shock G. Now, Shock G, in my opinion, Eli, is a legend. I think he's I think he's a legend. I think he's up there. He's one of those legends that people don't really talk about, but I feel like they really should talk about. Uh, for one thing, because he did a lot. I mean, like I said, he was in the nineties before Dr. Dre, before NWA, before Snoop Dogg. Like I said, Digital Underground was from Oakland. So he was one of the first big well, Digital Underground is one of the first big West Coast rap groups to come out. You know, uh, people yeah, don't know before, like before like. Hammer. That was before Hammer. Before I mean, I would count Hammer. Let's count it. Okay, we'll count Hammer. Yeah, you better. Same same area also, <laughs> that's what Shit Shock G looks like. Uh, for those who don't, if that doesn't look familiar to you, I'll show you one more time. That not look familiar to you. He also had an alter ego, which he was also one of the first rappers to have an ego of Humpty Hump. You know. And if that looks familiar, you're like, why does that look like a thing? Because basically he took the persona of Groucho Marx from the Marx Brothers and decided to become Humpty Hump. Completely rapped differently. People didn't even know they were the same guy when it was rapping because he would actually <laughs> rap on the thing. Yeah, he would like featuring Humpty Hump with Digital Underground. And he would like take he would take the first verse and Humpty Hump take the third verse. You're like, are they the same guy? Are they different? What you know, you're confused. You don't know. You know, he was like before Cool Keith, before uh MF Doom, you know, he was doing that. You know, and then I guess other rappers took that. It's a lot of stuff that he says in, 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 in those rap lyrics back then that rappers are taking nowadays. You don't know where it came from. Allow me to reintroduce myself. My name was Ho. Him first. He did all that. They were party rappers. You know, they had dances. That's how it was you know, back then, man. The Humpty Hump. All about you know, rocking the party. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The third verse was, well, okay, you have a dance. Now you release the dance and say what that is. So that was the thing. Uh, his album. Sex packs. Now, this is a classic album. Like, here's the thing: if you notice something about the six pack album, there's no advisory sticker on here. So, okay, there's yeah. no explicit language. However, if you really listen to it, every song is about sex. But they had to do it in a like, uh, I don't know, a, a like really suggestive way, or you know, you know, clever way to get the point across, inventive way to get the point across. It wasn't whap. You know, where it just tells you what the song is about. You know, you grab him by the biscuits. You're like, what does he mean by that? You know, lick my love pump. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, stuff like this. You had to be inventive with the rap, rap, uh, with the lyrics back then. And uh, Eli, since this is a podcast about comic books and entertainment and movies like that, do you remember a movie called Nothing But Trouble? I do remember that movie. Yes. Okay, so it was a that's old pretty 90s. much my that's pretty much my biggest knowledge of Digital Underground. Was the Humpty yes, Dance? Yes, that was a big thing. That's pretty much like the, the song. Thing that took, 
Yeah, and the movie and this all movie. around the world yeah. the same song. Yeah, so that's the song. That's the uh, movie that pretty much took Digital Underground from here to that next level thing because they was like I said, it was a shitty Chevy Chase and Dan Aykroyd movie nobody saw. Uh, I think I remember seeing on HBO or whatever like that, but I used to just rewind it, uh, fast forward it to the Digital Underground parts when I had it on VHS. They would do it. Of course, they released the song as a um as a single. It was a single for the movie, so that honestly the song was bigger than the movie. Uh, not only that, because not only was it a big song, it was also the first verse of Tupac Shakur. Yes, Shock oh, G shit. discovered Tupac because at the time Tupac te technically wasn't a member of Digital Underground. But he was like the roadie. He was like their go-to guy, like go get this, go get that. I think he was like a backup dancer, something like that. So Tupac was, uh, like he said, future artist, and then. I think the first two albums or three albums, something like that, like Shock G helped produce those albums, like Me Against the World, uh, I Get Around, Digital Underground was featured on that song, you know, so it was a big thing. So, uh, yeah, if you want, if you listen to this podcast, definitely go listen to some old Digital Underground, what we got here, Clip, and unofficial. Clip is in the house. <laughs> and unofficial member, uh, Fish Fry, what up with you, <laughs> brother Clip? See, Clip know about uh, Digital Underground. Uh, yeah, so like I said, can we move on to the next part of the podcast? Yeah, sure. Let's just jump into it. Let's just jump into the shit show. Okay. The, the shit show. This shit show. <laughs> I don't know what you say. I, I know you said you were about to go see it, but I know you already had like a negative view of what you're about to say. Like, I already know this is going to be some bullshit. Let me go see it anyway. But I don't know what you said afterwards. So I'm just, you know, so I'm going in completely blind on what you're going to say. on it. So I feel like Sex pack with my shit. See, Cliff, I know you know about Digital Underground. Uh, everybody do what you like. Mm -mm. Anyway, go listen to Sex Pack. Go listen to some Digital Underground. Listen to Tupac, because he was on this shit also. Everybody's listening right now. So, like I said, we're going to talk about more combat. Uh, Eli, I'm just going to get... Should we start off with, like, the history of the combat? Let's just jump into it. Let's just jump into it. Uh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> let's, just, let's just do it. Let's just go. Everybody, if, if you listen to this podcast, you know what uh, Mortal Kombat is. You know what ABACABB start is. You know what that is. So let's just jump into it. Uh, like I said, this is a, a brand new movie. This is a reboot. This is not Mortal Kombat 3 or anything connected to those old Christopher Lambert movies back in the 90s and anything like that. This is fresh. This is new. New actors, new storyline, all the stuff like that. Uh, Eli, like I said, I'm going first because <laughs> I don't know what you're going to say, but I do know that the internet is like tearing this movie apart. They're tearing this movie a new asshole. And honestly, in my opinion, I think this is the best video game movie ever made. Keep in mind, notice what I just said. That's a very low bar. So take that with a grain of salt. But as far as what I said, it's the best video game movie ever made. I think it's completely well. I think it's a lot of things that work for this movie. Uh, the fact that they turn like the first off the the best thing about the movie is the Scorpion and Sub Zero fights. Both of them. I'm, I'm spoiling the movie for you. It's whatever. So both of those fight scenes were awesome. Uh, people say that some of the weaknesses of the movie that all the fight scenes weren't up to snuff. I think because I almost feel like that the two Sub Zero uh, Scorpion fights were almost done by somebody else because they feel way different than everything else in the movie. Like they have like pace to them, like heat to them, or whatever you want to call it. Um, uh, Sub Zero, I like how they had him like a Jason Voorhees character. Like he wasn't even a fighter; he was just like a force of nature the whole way through the movie. Uh, there were some memorable moments in there, like with uh, like when Sub Zero versus Jax, you know, uh, the Kung Lao fatality. There was a lot of a lot of that in there, like a lot of callbacks to the video games. I think for the video game wise, there is a lot of stuff you catch. Now, here's a, something that happened in the video game that I laughed my ass off at, it, and I was the only person. That I remember that laughed my ass off. This scene right here, uh, the foot sweep. Now, most people don't realize that this is a callback to the game, because if you play the game a bunch of bunch of scrubs, the only thing they do is just foot sweep all day. So when I saw that scene, I laughed my ass off. Like, I, I did see some theaters also. <laughs> I yeah, I saw this. So I think that's why my that's opinion why you're mad. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, the first thing was a great guy. Weird, I give it uh, a B. Luke Kang acting in a damn sandwich. Hey, Luke Kang acting in the first movie was skinny as fuck, but he was like, like rip. You know, he was skinny but rip. You know, like like Bruce Lee. This one was almost. I hate to say it. I hope we don't get canceled. Androgynous, in my opinion. <laughs> That's me. Anyway, <laughs> what else I got to say about the movie? Oh, and the person that stole the movie that I wasn't expecting for it to happen, Kano. 
to me, Kano stole the movie. Every time he showed up, like the movie was kind of like going through its paces for a while. And I'm like, it's cool. It's like, but every time Kano showed up, anything he said, he was just being an ass all the time. I was having fun with it, with the movie. Um, I'm trying to think for the time, what else was going on with this movie? Um, not a bad. I'm not just gonna just kiss this movie's ass all day. Now for the bad. Uh, the main character, the lead actor in the movie, Cole Young, whatever his name was, sucked ass. It just it just is what it is. Uh, Cabal. I did like Cabal because Cabal was like the asshole bad guy that Kano was, even though he was an asshole good guy. So they was kind of like playing off each other. It made no sense why he had a Brooklyn accent. I didn't care. I just thought it was funny. So uh, and that's the thing. I didn't take the movie too seriously. I just enjoyed it. I got what I wanted. I stuck my face with popcorn. I got some cool fight scenes. Sub Zero and Scorpion was cool. Uh, now Eli, there was one thing that really did bother me more than anything else in this movie: the fact that Sub uh, Scorpion and his great 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 great, great grandson jumped Sub Zero. It was a two on one. When did when did it be cool? When it became cool for the good guys to jump the bad guy? It should have been one-on-one. You should have ran it one-on-one. You take an L, you take an L. I don't like this new trend of good guys jumping bad guys. That's my thing. Even with Thanos. Hey, why don't you go one-on-one with Thanos? Don't jump him while you're eating soup and shit. You know, that's my thing. So, uh, overall, my opinion, I get the movie. Four out of five. Go for it, Eli. Rip this movie, new asshole. Okay. Um, well, I, when they were fighting and bloody and the and blood was going on, it was cool. When they, <laughs> when 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 they weren't fighting and when there was no blood, then it wasn't cool. That's my review. <laughs> okay. Well, <that's, laughs> sure the fight to the scenes point. were cool. Uh, yeah, I, I thought the fight scenes were fine. I thought the violence was all there. I was all good with that. Um, but I don't think I dug. The, I thought it got slow at some point. It didn't have to need to be two hours long. Cut, they I mean, it cut the, or whatever it was it was over 90 minutes and it didn't need to be you know um, <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah I, I didn't care about the characters i i they were like it's like they were trying to they were trying to mesh like this big epic it kind of reminded me of like the pirates of the caribbean's movies where it's like these big epic wide you know you know extravagant production but it's cheesy as fuck you know what i'm saying you know, yeah. it's like trying to be serious, but it's also cheesy as fuck. And that's what I got with this, this big, wide, epic scale to this movie, but it was really kind of dumb, you know? <laughs> and I don't know if I... I mean, but that's like a, what sold it on me. I expected to be I, cheesy, dumb. Well, I expected and it I to be cheesy, future. and I expected not to take it seriously, but they were trying to make they were trying to take it seriously by trying to make us give a shit about all this drama, about this family shit that I didn't care about. And then when it tried to be cheesy, I wasn't laughing. So it's like they failed on both. They're trying to be the serious drama going on, but then they were trying to be cheesy and funny, and they both clashed. The tone, two tones just collided with each other. It didn't work. I wasn't laughing at the cheesy shit, and I didn't give a fuck about the drama shit. So just when they weren't punching each other, I didn't care. <laughs> so, but other than that, yeah, the fights were cool. So the, the beginning was dope, like Cliff said. The first 10 minutes was dope. Just give me that fucking movie. I didn't, you know, give me ninjas back in the day fucking cutting each other up. I, that was that was dope. That beginning fight was dope. Yes, the Sub-Zero Scorpion fight was dope. You know, and I, I probably, the, the only time that I laughed was Jack smashing dude's head. Like, was it Ryko's head? Like, uh, right. like, like Ricky O, the story of Ricky, you know? <laughs> now, my thing is that if they're fighting in the pit area, I felt like that was a missed opportunity not throw him in the pit, just like in a game. But that's just me. Well, but there's yeah, a lot of shit I would like to have seen, but I didn't see. I would like, you know, like Raiden blowing somebody's head up with the with lightning bolts and shit. You know, I mean, Raiden <laughs> didn't, didn't do anything, and that's the thing that we have to admit that we know that they were setting up a sequel trilogy franchise, yeah. whatever. You know, and that's what they're always doing. They, like, they didn't blow their load in this movie, which yeah. you know. Um, and that's what, you know, fuck it. Do an Aquaman. Give us it all. All over our face right now, right now. I mean, now. give you a trilogy in one movie? <laughs> fuck yeah. Give me all that shit. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it, I mean, it was I. Right. I give it a solid okay. You know, three out of five. Um, I almost saw this in the theater, but I didn't. And then I just fucking watched it. And I was starting to doze 
in the middle of it. I was starting to doze off. Now, to be honest um, with you, Eli, I, I think that's why my opinion may be skewed in this movie versus everybody else in the, in the on the internet. Because I think people did see this movie at home on HBO Max, stuff like that, watching it by themselves, maybe with a fr- family member, stuff like that. But I saw this in the theater with about 20, 30 people like that. We've been having a good time. So I think my opinion might have been skewed by everybody enjoying themselves, having fun, laughing at the movie theater. Instead of me just sitting there in the theater by myself, just like the Transformer movies and the Fast and Furious movies, stuff like that. In the theaters, they're fun. At home watching by myself, maybe not so much. Yeah. You know. So I yeah, felt maybe, this was, maybe I would have laughed more if other people were laughing at it. But I, yeah, <laughs> just watching by my, by yourself, I can see it. when you watch it by yourself, then you start, you know, putting on your critiques, you know, and start really digging into it and cinema sins, the movie, stuff like that, because you got nobody else to enjoy the movie with. You're just there by yourself. So of course you're gonna have a more trained eye to it. Let's see, we got the Mortal Kombat reboot has been in development for almost 20 years. And yeah, and it took 20 years to get done. <laughs> uh, should have killed Cole's family that would have woken up Scorpion. Uh, I mean, he woke up anyway, so it kind of had the same effect. And, so. I, and I, Yeah, the, the the Goro fight was cool. I liked, I liked, I liked, I liked, I liked the fight scenes. The fight scenes were cool. Yeah, when he yeah. saw what's her face, the, the flying chick in hat, was it Kung Lao, and he Fucking saw oh, yeah, that chicken that, thing, that shit. scene was leaked online for me about two weeks ago because oh. you know the movie was already out in China, like that. But I didn't know. I thought it was like a a, a new DLC for the game or something. I'm like, oh. I remember, how do you do that move? You know, so I didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it was cool. I mean, yeah, I mean, like it was all there. It's just I didn't care about what was going on. Just people just keep punching, and then then yeah, that's how it. Yeah, once they weren't fighting, I I was like out of the movie you know um yeah i mean I, and i didn't really have that much expectations for it i never liked any of them i mean i didn't even like the old movies you know <laughs> i thought well, the first that's, one that's why i said it's the best video game movie ever made because i didn't like the old movies anyway people keep saying that uh the old movies were the best movies of all time yeah when you were 10 when you watched the movie it's just like saying space jam is a classic you know well i was Good Burger, when the you know, first movie like, came out i was like 21 so i i thought it's <laughs> <laughs> so they just blow your mind with the greatest thing. Yeah, I, I thought the shit sucked. Up. But uh, I, I, I mean, I, I just didn't have the expectations um, that you know um, that were in there. I mean, I, I thought you know, like, I kind of like, okay, give me some cool fight scenes, and I'm good. And they did, but they just it was just too too few and far between. It is dread, you know, especially that second act. It was like a long, drawn out second act where I was I like, come it. on, man. It. It, it was know, not a perfect movie. Not a yeah. perfect movie. I'm not. <laughs> I don't so care about the movie. long journey. Yeah, I didn't care about Scorpion's grandson. You know, uh, yeah, the Johnny Cage cameo on the poster. I don't <laughs> yeah, I just thought it was I. Right. I, I thought it was I. Right, you know. Um, Honestly, Eli, yeah. I, I expected you to be way more harsh than that. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't think it totally sucked. I just okay, thought it was that, okay. that's the that's the vibe online right now. That's the vibe you know? on the internet right now. Yeah, I mean, I see people. I thought there's a bunch of people. I see like, oh, it's so cool. It's rad. Blah 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 blah. I think it's all right. You know, it's okay. You know, it was worth the look. It, you know, it's nothing. It's 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 exactly what it wants to be. You know, a cheesy video game movie. And right. I and. I, I don't think it's the best video game movie. I still, I still think Resident Evil Four is better than this. <laughs> seen what happened in Four? That's the one where they're on the roof and shit. <laughs> is that the the one with the apocalypse when everything got blown up and shit? Yeah, it's the fourth one when they're on the roof. That's my favorite Resident Evil. Movie. I don't think I remember that one. <laughs> no. uh, I expected the radio R period of Mortal Kombat franchise. Oh, I kind of was. <laughs> <laughs> More Kombat franchise is a period. It never took itself seriously. It was better than WW84, I guess. I mean, sure. it was. I, I sure. thought it was. Yeah. I, I sure. I, I yeah. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's oh, compare. Let, let's compare Hangnail to a canker sore. Which one's better? Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I said, everybody's everybody's a critic nowadays. It's like to just be the first person to shit on the next movie coming out. So it's whatever. So you know, uh, yeah. The game. The games are a lot more fun. That's <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, that's the thing. The games don't take themselves seriously anyway. People not the thing is, people keep saying when is it, when the video game uh, movies going to catch up with the comic book movies, and I don't think they ever will. I don't think they ever designed for that uh, because, like I said, comic books there are two things that they have to do in order to be considered 
good or even worth money. One, number one, have to have good artwork, great artwork. And two, have to have a story. They must have a story, a good story to keep you hooked. Otherwise, there's no point in doing it. Video games are not the same. They don't have to have a good story. You What's know, the best selling video game of all time? Video Tetris. game? Yes. I was going to say Mario or something. <laughs> Tetris. I mean, well, Mario's up there too, but Tetris, Minecraft, shit like that, that you don't have to have any video and don't have to have any story whatsoever. Even with Mario, like you just said, it's the same story. They made like 40 of those games. It's the same story. Princess Peach get kidnapped by Koopa. I mean, come on, Mario. After the second time, she's she not getting kidnapped. You know, just admit she's for the streets and just move on to something else like her sister or something. So, what do we you got? You know what's here? cool? Did you see that Scorpion cartoon? I did not see that. Did uh? That, that's did pretty cool. That's pretty cool. It's and it, and it's got a really cool story. <laughs> Scorpion okay. comes back from hell to get revenge on uh, Shitcock or whatever that shitty ass villain. I hate him in the game. I fucking hate that guy in the game. Shin Shinock Shinock or whatever. I can't remember. I, I can't, honestly, <laughs> I kind of stopped playing after three. Oh yeah, you don't even like that. you don't even like Mortal Kombat, huh? I'm a Street Fighter guy. I thought we yeah. already we talked about that. Yeah, I'm either or I'm a, whatever. You know, I, I don't mind Mortal Kombat. Never mind. And that's my I, thing. I I got the last one I got was the one with Jason and and Leatherface and. Uh, that's the new one. The, the Alien and Predator. I thought no, I thought there was yeah, one. Yeah, the after last that. one you got is the last one they made. No, I think there's one more after that. You got the one with Robocop and Terminator. No, I don't. No, I don't have that one. Okay, that's the one I thought you were gonna get. So no. Yeah, my, got, my thing yeah. about Mortal Kombat just the the game itself, and I know we're gonna say this in the video game section if we have one. Mortal Kombat, I've never taken it seriously, even as a video game. I always because, like I said, I'm a fighting game aficionado or enthusiast. I'll say enthusiast because people don't think I'm good. I'm not that good. Uh, Mortal Kombat to me is always that fighting game for people that don't know how to play fighting games. You know, it basically sells you and everything else except the actual combat and the gameplay of it. It's got blore, gore, it's got guts, it's got all these fancy characters like Terminator and Predator and. You know, all yeah. this Robocop and shit it like that. They don't have Chun Li butt shot or whatever where she <laughs> punches you with her ass. Yeah, there's none of that. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Killer man. Instinct was dope, Cliff. I, I like Killer Instinct. Hey. With Saber Wolf. Saber I kind of put Killer Instinct in the same category. Of Dago back. Because or Jago or J. What was that? This ninja guy. I was cool J with too. Jago? Jago like or Yago. I did like Cyber Wolf. I did like Cyber Wolf. Yeah. Or Saber Wolf. Or cyber. Was it Cyber or Saber? I don't know. I don't know. I, I, don't, I, I, I really I, play I, that game know. also. Yeah. I kind of put both of those games in the same category. So, <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's move on to the next part of the podcast. Okay. So, yeah. Oh, this is a long one. Not really long, but we're going to talk about it. Okay, so we're going to talk about uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Like I said, it's the new one that came out. Oh, I didn't get a thing, but that's okay. All right, so yeah, like I said, we're going to talk about Falcon and the Winter Soldier. This is the uh, either season finale or series finale. We don't really know. Kevin Feige kind of changed his mind on what it may or may not be. So, hey, we just got to kind of go with it. Uh, Eli, I'll, I'll let you go first on this one. I, I I think you're not gonna tell this one, asshole. So I'll let you go. But oh, I don't. well, I might. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I I felt it was a little rushed. That's my thing. I felt like they kind of crammed a lot of shit into this last. Like, okay, we just got one episode left. Let's wrap it all up. That's what it kind of felt like. Um, we got to get you know, we, we got to get the you know, the big finale, big epic action scene. We got to get you know Batroc back. Have that in there, and then we need to make. Sam, Captain America, and then give the, his cool speech at the end, and blah blah blah, and like, like just end it. Like I, I just I felt it was really rushed. They kind of crammed a lot into this. Um, uh, yeah, that's that was my first impression. It did have its moments. Um, uh, John or uh, John, I was gonna say John Bradley. <laughs> <laughs> John Walker saying, uh, what's his face? Life mattered. I was like, whoa. Yeah, that was he very on the nose. <laughs> you think Lamar's life didn't matter? I like okay. Yeah, I was like, oh <laughs> shit. Okay. Um I oh, did yeah, think his show. So yeah, he shouldn't on it. <laughs> <laughs> I did think uh Sam's speech was pretty cool, but I felt like it was like a little forced. Like all of a sudden, like I said, we he decides to be cap, becomes cap, and then inspires the world all in one episode you know what i mean um 
going but, but from did he though that's the thing did he because we don't all we know is that the, the grc decided to table their discussion we didn't say they decided to kill world peace or racism anything like that or national debt we don't know what they did he just but decided I mean, so he gave that he gave the cool speech that we you know and and, and, I, and it was it was cool i mean i dug what he said it's just it felt a little tacked on like i don't know i i, I guess it's just like i said I, it just felt crammed it felt a little crammed. That's that's all. Um, yeah, yeah, that's what I got. Uh, Wait, I did like I, again. I liked the Bradley and uh, you know Isaiah Bradley talking with Sam at the end. I thought that was great. Like I said, I love those human moments of the show, and Sam talking his shit to telling Isaiah Bradley, and Isaiah is like, "Oh, you almost had me. Almost bought your bullshit." <laughs> I thought that was funny. <laughs> And so yeah, tell them to like, won't you just light up just uh and you like lighten up just once, you know. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, but then at the end he hugged him. I didn't expect him to hug him yeah. uh when he showed when he took him to the Smithsonian. So yeah. Yeah, and that whole thing at the end, like now no one's gonna forget or uh, people are always gonna remember who you are and what you did. I mean, it had its moments. It had its moments, you know. Um, like I said, I just I think they needed one or two more at least one more episode, you know, if they were gonna do all, all that to make it more impactful, you know? So why, why, I mean, WandaVision got eight episodes and half yeah, of them like 30 minutes a piece though. Yeah. So. And they were, but yeah, but half of, half of that, half of that was like a bunch of misdirections and bullshit to keep us guessing. Right. <laughs> you know, so, so this was I, pretty much straightforward, even though yeah. we were kind of, nobody was fooled on the power broker, but yeah, we, we all know who the power broker was at the end. So. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, yeah, Izzy five eleven. What? What? Oh yeah. Oh, you you too. Also. Oh. So, yeah. So, but like I said, gave your thoughts. I'm gonna give my thoughts real quick on it. I love the last episode. Uh, I love Sam's speech at the end of it because it pretty much summed up what the show was about. Uh, normally, in every single other action movie we've ever seen, when they beat the terrorists and the terrorists die, you know, they thank the hero. Thank you for killing all the terrorists, stuff like that. And Sam had to back him up, like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You're just throwing around a terrorist word. You're not even paying attention to why she was coming after you. Because, like I said, Sam understands that just because you kill a revolutionary don't mean you kill the revolution. Hell, sometimes the revolution gets even stronger. And you're basically telling them that if you don't get your shit together, you're going to get Carly 2.0, who's going to be even crazier than she was before. You guys are like, and he was telling them, like, you guys are way more powerful than me. You're basically like Thanos. You can, you know, level a force with an email. Yeah. You can, you know, uh, send money to uh, a country with a phone call you know you can do more but if it's just all you just you know talking to yourself you know what are you going to solve and they kind of saw and it kind of sums up the whole show we were talking about you got carly which people would say is like the extreme version of the far left and you got john walker which people say the extreme version of the far right and you got sammy buck be caught in between the middle of this war between them you know and all he's trying to do is just find a middle ground you know so i thought i thought that was pretty good right there Oh, just uh, Leroy, I don't hate that. Just more swinging in the. He's not Spider Man. This, this ain't Miles Morales, which I, I know you mean, hate him I think also. you mean swinging punches, like swinging hands. Not oh, swinging. yeah. Okay. <laughs> or unless well, dicks. Maybe he's thinking. Of, <laughs> I know he ain't thinking of dicks. <laughs> I guess Zemo is taking care of the rest of the revolutionary soldiers from behind the scenes. Or is he? Maybe it's Melane from Seinfeld. We don't know. You know. Uh, so yeah, that's my whole thing about it. Uh, yeah, just Sam becoming Captain America the first time. You know, they throwing in the Black Falcon, Fal uh, Captain America. Uh, Bucky did get kind of sidelined towards the end. It became like we they sold the show as a buddy cop show, but towards the end, it became more of like this is a Sam Falcon show where Bucky is kind of just tagging along. That's kind of where where it went to. Uh, don't really know how you can you know make it balance between them towards the end, but that's just what it was. Um, I don't know how Bad Track the Leaper is now Sam's arch enemy. I don't know where they came <laughs> from. No, he's just a throwaway guy that for the, you know, for Steve Rogers, but for him, it's just whatever. So, yeah, like I said, I, honestly, I, I thought it was an awesome show. I did like the, the, the show, the episode before this better, but yeah. I thought as far as a wrap up, it was a good wrap up. You got to see Sam, you got to see, what he can do with the Captain America shield. You know, he has his own strengths and weaknesses, you know, um, John Walker had a, a heel face, well, a face heel turn to a heel face turn, you know, 
Uh, and then he finally became U.S. agent at the end. Uh, you know, Bucky got his wrap up with the with the old guy, you know, finally told him he killed his son. The Winter Soldier did it. I am the Winter Soldier. You know, so all that stuff was pretty cool. Uh, I need to do, I'm, me personally, I'm going to do a, a complete rewatch. Now it's done. Now it's set. I'm going to do a complete rewatch of it to see how it goes. Because I feel like WandaVision was designed to be a TV show where this was designed to be just a long movie. It was meant to, I feel like it was meant to be watched in one setting. And I'll binge it and see where it goes from there. So... Yeah, that's all I got to say about that. We can we can move on from there. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I okay. like the action. I thought the action was cool. Um, I just feel like, yeah, I just felt like some of those moments needed some time to breathe. You know, I just thought it was a lot. You know, and yeah, I like the speech. I like what he's. It was a cool speech. I just felt like, um, after all, you know, after all what was happened, it's like okay, let there's there's 15 minutes left in the show. Let's get. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get everybody set up to their Rip next. It up, B. Yeah, you know. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, um, yeah. I thought it was. Good. I mean, but all in all, I dug the show. You know, I thought that was cool. You know, but okay. I could have used like all maybe right. one oh. more episode. So. Okay, now we're gonna talk about something you want to talk about. <laughs> okay, we're finally, gonna, I decided to go ahead and stick it in there. Well, horror on, movies. Oh. <laughs> no, but I can't think of any horror movies in here. But anyway, uh, we're gonna talk about Shang Chi. We're gonna talk about okay. Shang-Chi. There was a Shang-Chi trailer that dropped. Uh, we both got a chance to check, take a look at it. Uh, I wanted to see old man Steve. Chris Evans' contract has expired. No more old man Steve. Let it go. <laughs> He's doing knives out too. Right. <laughs> and getting paid like way more money than Marvel was gonna pay him. So yeah, he, he can kiss that shit goodbye. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but like I said, we're going to talk about Shang-Chi. Like I said, this is Marvel's first Asian superhero movie. Oh, really? Mar Hollywood's first Asian superhero movie, I think. Oh, nah, that was some other. I mean, Kato, Green Hornet, you know. He was a sidekick. Uh, sidekick. Uh, I mean, Ghost in the Shell. Revenge, Shell, of, the, Revenge of the Ninja, but the, without. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, there was tons of ninja movies with, you know, blonde white dudes in the 80s, you know, just beating uh, the shit out of Shokazuki, though. Know, he, he was the shit back in the 80s, man. Shokazuki. <laughs> uh, what, was, he, was he from Hollywood, though? Yeah, we can name a bunch of 80, you know. You know, I know he brothers. wasn't from. He wasn't from, but you know, those were American-made movies. Those are canon-made. Those really? movies, yeah. Okay, Go, that's what Golan, I was, you know. Golan Globus or whatever. The you know. Okay, I thought you were like, name shit like Jim Cotta or some shit. You know. Oh well, that was a white dude. <laughs> yeah, we need to do Jim Cotta one day. <laughs> <laughs> Jim Cotta. That's the best bad movie ever made. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that uh, is. Uh, oh, that was old. That's an old comic. No. Yeah. Um, let's see. The one, the one. Oh, Jet Li. Jet, yeah, Jet Li was doing, and and Jackie Chan was, but they they were from China too, you know. Yeah, but they were doing silver American silver picture movies, so yeah, we go yeah. with that one. They sucked uh, though, but you know. <laughs> no, 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 not the one, not the one. The one was awesome. If nothing else, oh the end of the one, he gave the best speech ever. I am nobody's bitch. I am you law. You <laughs> oh my bitches. I love that scene. Man. I just quote this shit just for no reason. Uh what are we talking? We talking about Shang-Chi. Let's talk about Shang-Chi. Yeah. Okay. So who is Shang-Chi? Shang-Chi is Bruce Lee. Let's move on to the next topic. Okay, let's go. Okay. Well, let's let's expound on it a little bit. Okay. So <laughs> Yes. So that's all he is. Look, Bruce Lee was this shit beating ass left and right uh, in the dragons like that. Marvel wanted to do, you know, cash in on the the, the kung fu uh, exploitation craze. As a matter of fact, I think, like I said, he debuted in Deadly Hands of Kung Fu. Now, Eli, correct me if I'm wrong or not. Wasn't Bruce Lee like the actual Bruce Lee? In Deadly Hands of Kung Fu? Like it started with stories of him first? It was. I was reading some of those actually this week. Mm -hmm. Um, Shang Chi didn't show up till I think the second issue. The first issue was called with the Sons of Tigers or whatever. Um, okay, the Tiger Sons or something. It was like a group. It was like you had, but it was it was basically like Enter the Dragon. You had the white dude, the Asian dude, and the black guy. Um, <laughs> I'm too <laughs> busy looking good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I won't even notice. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you straight out of a comic book. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cliff just said yeah, right before. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, but yeah, Shang Chi showed up in the second, I think the second or third issue of that, um, of that mass of uh, Deadly Hands of Kung Fu, and that's what it was called. Then, of course, they started building on Shang Chi's uh, 
storyline. Then it became Shang Chi, Master of Kung Fu, and you know, then mm-hmm. that he became the main uh, story. But that 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 was a magazine. It was actually it wasn't really a comic book. It was a magazine that had articles. And, and see, and know. that's the thing. Back then, when Marvel was making books, everything wasn't in the six one six or in canon. You know, yeah. some shit was just it. Like Shang Chi, he was first made. He was he was over here. Yeah, there was there's actually was articles. Time articles yeah. and interviews with like you know it was like black belt magazine but with comics in it yeah know? they were trying to sell shang chi to an older audience basically yeah like x-men weren't going to show up in the shang chi coming back in in the 70s it wasn't going to happen he didn't know who they were didn't care who they were you know and so um hell i don't think shang chi like really popped up in the marvel universe I and mean, hopefully somebody can correct me uh until honestly like till jonathan hickman did it in in the uh, in the avengers like early two thousand, uh, he may have showed like in a Spider Man comic or something like that. But yeah. other than that, that's it. I mean, he did have his own series for a while. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he kind of disappeared for a while. I'm glad I switched. I didn't lose the fight to Fu Manchu. Oh yeah, we got to talk about Fu Manchu, race stereotype, and now Mandarin. Yeah, father son, yeah. like cool idea. Um, that's yeah, what I did like notice. I, said, I did notice reading those early Shang Chi comics that they are cringy as fuck. <laughs> Like I said, it's a bunch of white dudes making this stuff. So a fu, a fu, fu man shoe is his dad. I'm like, damn. Yeah. Now the only now the main reason they that's changed like saying, it. That's like saying Blade's dad's flavor flavor. Like, <laughs> like, like that's now the, the main thing is they Marvel lost the rights to Fu Man Shoe like back in Asia like that. So Hold on, but Fu Manchu is like a made up white guy villain. Like the, a white guy made this cheesy Asian villain for Sir Sherlock Holmes, or where, where did he? Where did he come from? Where did Fu Manchu start? It was they just made him like that. Yeah. No, yeah. I, actually, I take that back. He did show up in a Black Panther comic in around like two thousand five or something like that. Shang Chi, Shang Chi, and Fu Manchu showed up also. But since Marvel didn't have the rights to him, anytime Fu Manchu was about to say his name, somebody cut him off. You know, he couldn't say a name, or the word bubble got blocked, or something like that. That's how it happened. It was a weird story, but. So in the comics, they changed the name to what? What was it? Because, like I said, like we we review Shang Chi, like his whole, like the whole. Oh yeah, last the, new, the new one. The new was really good. Yeah, the new. Yeah, book the new was really good. Uh, Fu was a uh, evil. evil. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he had fifty issues. So the new one, I think the name was Win Wu, Zin Wu, something like that. Whatever it was. His dad. Yeah. Yeah, whatever. It was. So Marvel decided, like it's says, MCU. We people bitching because what we did to the Mandarin, and people keep thinking that. You know, Trevor Slattery was the Mandarin. Trevor Slattery was not the Mandarin, or even supposed to be the Mandarin in that movie. That's supposed to have been that other guy, uh, Seth Killian. I might be screwing mm-hmm. his name, but Aldrich Killian. I keep always calling him Seth Killian. Aldrich Killian was the Mandarin in that movie. Now people are thinking, oh, they're going to do it in the misdirect. They own this is this was a retcon from that movie because people bitched about it all the time. The guy that actually made the movie, Shane Black, said. This is my ending. This I made the movie. Once I'm done, Marvel will be able to fuck they want to do. But that's how I wrote the movie. So now we're here. You know, they're giving us the Mandarin with the Ten Rings. He's his crime boss. But is it crime boss? Because he really ain't doing the Mandarin shit we've known. Because like I said, they've updated the Mandarin. He's not like another Fu Manchu ripoff like Stan Lee wrote him. You know, they've updated him. He wears like business suits now. He's a crime boss. Hell, Psylocke from the X-Men was one of his like assassins. That's how she became from this posh white chick from the Spice Girls to like this Japanese sexy ninja assassin. Cause she, he switched bodies with his girlfriend, a wife or daughter. I don't know what the fuck he did. Anyway, <laughs> that's the whole comic that. books, man. It's, it's comic, comic books, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, but that's the thing. So that's the Mandarin and then they say Not like, my Psylocke. <laughs> <laughs> right. They say Fu Manchu might be in this, but yeah, that's it. Uh, another thing I want to talk about this. You know what the main reason I'm excited about this, Eli? Because of the actor. Okay. Yeah. Simo Lu. I'm excited for him because of Kim's convenience. That's the thing. Nobody knows where this guy came from. He just popped out. Everybody just think he just popped out of nowhere. He's this unknown actor. And for the most part, he is because his credits aren't in like any martial arts movies or any Hong Kong shabbos like that. He was in a sitcom. A Canadian sitcom that's on Netflix. You can check it out and see it like this. Kim Convenience. He just played like the dumb older brother that was just getting all the chicks and shit like that. That's all he did. He never did any kung fu. He wasn't even that smart. He was just there. But he's charismatic. He's he's personable. 
Honestly, Eli, I think he's the Asian Chris Pratt. That's me. That's what I think. I think he has that level of charisma, you know, uh, right. for different pits like Mars of Nights and Marvel Max. Oh, yeah. Thank you, 616, man. Yeah, he wasn't. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He wasn't a Heroes for Hire thing. Like, all the street heroes popped up in there. Misty Knight was organizing like she was Nick Fury and shit like that. But, yeah, that's it like that. So, yeah, that's my thing why I'm excited about Shang-Chi because, and the thing is, like, everybody from Kim's Convenience is blowing up. Like, Apple, the dad showed up in Star Wars. Like I said, he's showing up here in, in Shang-Chi. So, like, it, it's almost like Atlanta. Like, everybody on this show is blowing up. You know, so I'm excited for everybody on this show. Uh, I thought Ram would who Rain would be Oh yeah, Cliff, y'all gotta keep naming these people from the 90s and shit, man. <laughs> they, they were in the 2020s. <laughs> Just like y'all was saying, y'all wanted the old guy from Mortal Kombat in the 90s to be the new Mortal Kombat. Yeah, I, I know you're talking about Ninja Assassin. Yeah, no. That, that was Kane dude. Kasugi. Wasn't that Kane Kasugi? Sho Kasugi's son was a Ninja Assassin. I think so. It's been so long since I've seen Ninja Assassin. Yeah, but but like I said, and the only reason he got the job, well, the main reason he got the job, because he tweeted Marvel back in 2014, when one of those movies came out, he was like, oh, can we get an Asian superhero? And Kevin Feige called him back. Like, I got one for you. You want to be an Asian superhero? He's like, okay, cool. Let's get the role. So that's uh, inspirational. You know. So let's see. And someone who loves roasting people on Twitter is hilarious. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All the uh the asshole YouTubers, that's not us, you know, they they dug into his Twitter feed and found out he says some shit about Nicki Minaj's music, and now they're saying he's canceled because he shitted on mu- Nicki Minaj's music back in 2012 or some shit. I don't know. Oh, uh, no, yeah, Black Panther well, inspired. Well, I don't know damn that bullshit. Yeah, okay, it's not a bad It's not that the trailer was cool. <laughs> <laughs> trailer was cool. You can talk about trailer. And the thing is, like like Cliff just said about Black Panther. Oh uh, yeah, Black Panther Spider because Black Panther came out so like that he heard it was getting done. And he also said that because of Black Panther, the reason this movie is getting done. You know, so I'm excited for it. So yeah, hopefully this movie. Um, I mean, yeah, here's the thing. The- Marvel Marvel really can't fuck. Marvel could fuck this up, but they really can't fuck this up because hopefully it's not another Mulan situation. You know, yeah, I didn't, I didn't we can like it all we want to, yeah. But we can yeah. like it all we want to. But the but the main thing is to cater to China. Whatever China wants, give it to them. Don't do any weird shit to make China be like, "Fuck this movie, I'm out." You know, sell it to them. You sell this shit to China, this could easily be Marvel's best selling solo movie. Period. If they do it right. Well, I haven't seen Just, Mulan, but the trailer, the the shit that I saw, like some of those epic fight scenes you know and some of the fight scenes that i saw in this the shang chi trailer reminded me of the old 90s hong kong cinema fights so so, so you sold on it yeah okay. so that that's what i'm i you know and it they don't do that anymore it, it's it's they don't the, fuck red wolf fuck that guy <laughs> <laughs> that's not it coming that's not it coming <laughs> quit trying to make red wolf a thing <laughs> uh, but um but fucking, they, it's hard to do that, you know. There was a, the ninety. I'm talking about the new wave '90s Hong Kong action, you know. Crush Tiger, Hidden Dragon, that type. Yeah, well, he, that, before that, you know, okay. Crouching Tiger was trying to like bite that, and they did it okay because it's hard to do, you know. You know, like you, you, the the early. You know, Sam Hong and the, the Jackie Chan's old crew and Jet Li's old crew. And when, when Donnie Yen was the bad guy that Jet Li would fight in all his movies and shit. You know, those early 90s where they were, you know, the heyday of Wu, Yoon Wu Ping doing all the, the wire work. You know, they, they no one does that like that anymore. You know, then Hollywood tried it, you know, fucking Daredevil. Charlie's and Angels. Charlie's Angels. Yeah. And it was Dark <laughs> Angel on the fucking TV show. Fucking all that fucking... It, they sucked at it. America sucked at the wire work, you know? <laughs> so it's hard to do that. It's just hard. And you don't see that anymore. They don't make them like that anymore. So it's cool to see the throwbacks like that. Like Ip Man or the Raid movies, they they were, because it's all about the camera work too. And you can have the awesome fight fighters doing all the awesome choreography, but if you don't shoot it right, it don't look as cool. And they, okay, they had, like, they had it all in there. Opinion. I've right. never asked your opinion. What do you think about the Umbach movies? Oh, those are great too. Okay, cool. I, I, I like want to see yeah. what you thought about. Okay, cool. no, Tony Jaa is cool. Like the protector and Umba, yeah. 
Ombak 2 is my favorite. <laughs> Umbak one is just like one of my favorite martial arts movies of all time. That's just me appearing. That's cool too, but bullshit. or the protector, yeah. Umbak's cool, but I like the second one. That's my favorite out of the whole series. But um six one six I'm gonna tell you why they didn't get done. Yeah, uh Ang Lee was one of the characters before he got the rights for the rest of the uh yeah. yeah the and- thing about the one of the reasons uh Shane Chi is taking so long to get made is because when Marvel first got sold to Disney, you had that racist ass Pearl uh Ike Pearl Mutter. He didn't want Black Panther to get made. He didn't want that's the reason wait so long to get a Black Widow movie. He didn't want Black Widow to have a solo movie. He didn't want uh Captain Marvel, none of this shit. He didn't want Shang Chi. He was like, if they ain't white, they ain't selling. Don't make it. And then he didn't realize that uh, more than white people watch these movies. So yeah. once he got out of there and Kevin Fight got out of there, that's why we getting all these movies, you know. So yeah, Ang Lee did Crouching Tiger, you know. Um and Hulk. And Hulk, yeah, <laughs> but uh, but but though, but you know, it's hard to do that. It's hard to choreograph the camera and the fight. That's why Wu Ping did it all. He choreographed it and also did the camera movement. You know, it was did all. He, uh, work on the Matrix, also. He worked on the Matrix and Kill Bill. You know. Yep. Um. Yeah, he went Hollywood. Um, and then that fucked it all up for every. <laughs> once you took all the, once you they took all the fucking action. Uh, filmmakers from from Hong Kong, then Hong Kong movies suck. Also, Hong Kong going back under China rule kind of fucked that up too, because they were under British rule for a long time. But that's all. I'm getting too deep for that shit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> You're getting too woke, Eli. Yeah, I'm. No, I'm too like. No, I'm way. I, I I used to be a member of this like Asian film society back in like a long time. I used to go see all these. I had a membership like free tickets to go see all these kung fu movies at midnight on the weekends for like five years. I saw like all I did. So yeah, I yeah. <laughs> I'm a fucking <laughs> geek when it comes to that shit. But no, I, 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 honestly, only thing I want from Iron Fist to get his ass beat by Shang Chi. That's all I want. Like all this Spider Man, uh, Shang Chi versus Spider Man, Shang versus Wolverine. This beat whole Iron trailer, Fist ass, get him out of there. So. This whole trailer is better than the whole Iron Fist series. <laughs> it is. It, it, this 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 trailer is an apology for Iron Fist. That's what yeah. it is. I didn't even finish Iron Fist, man. I never I never watched all of Iron Fist. Didn't make it. L- look at you. Yeah. <laughs> we reviewed it. Wait, wait. No, did I, I didn't watch no. I went the, 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 the defenders. We reviewed the defenders, but I didn't watch I all the Iron Did they do Iron, Iron Fist too? Did they make a second season? Yes. If they did, I didn't watch it. We reviewed it. it. Uh, I not me. I must have did it by myself or something. I don't know. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> it yeah, sucks. It didn't really matter, but I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, um, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm excited. I, I'm excited for this. I'm excited for the old school, you know, fight scenes, which it looks like they're doing. Um, yeah, true season two was better, but still shit. I, yeah, okay. I mean, it could be worse. I mean, just... Yeah. Um, but I, yeah, I, you got for me. I'm all about the the choreography. Give me some cool choreography, and I'm good. You know. See, I was thinking you were thinking that Shang Chi was a little too marvelly. You know, not greedy enough. You know, like Umbach or some shit like that. You know. Oh man, I, I mean, yeah. But there's loud. You know, there's cheesy ass hog. I mean, have you seen some of? Have you seen City Hunter with Jackie Chan? That shit's cheesy. Yes, as where hard. he dressed up as Chun Li and Chun-Li, drag. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, there's all or or Stephen Chow. Stephen Chow. He made Kung Fu oh. Hustle. Stephen Chow's legend. Did, they had a Kung Fu legend. They had a Kung Fu Hustle poster in the trailer. Okay, I didn't see it, but yeah, yeah well, he was Stephen in his room. He had a shit. You know, they were he was trying to for you. Okay, I think he's gone out, but that's okay. We're gonna go to the next thing. Years he was trying to do the fuck. Okay, am I back? Yeah, you're back now. You paused for a second, you like oh. you were cursing me out, and then you're back now. So, you're oh, good. okay, I just said, Seth, yeah, um, Stephen Chow was supposed to do the Green Hornet. But then they got that other guy. Yeah. Okay. He's phased out again. Okay. So yeah, let's move to the next part of our guess. He, so I think you're back now. Okay, you're back yeah, now. Yeah, you're good. I? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you said you said uh Stephen Chow was uh going to do Green Hornet, but I guess they got that other guy to do Green Hornet. Not Seth Green, but the other guy to play Kato. Yeah. Yeah, he was but developing. Still. 
Yeah, he was developing it for years. Yeah. Yeah. Dogs but still, Shaolin yeah. Soccer, classic. So I think it's free on YouTube. And we'll, and we'll watch it. But uh, yeah, let's move on to the next part of the podcast. And I'll just get this out while hopefully everything can clear up over there. Uh, we're not going to talk about the video game section because I'm pissed off about the video game section right now. Uh, even though if you go on PlayStation right now, Horizon Zero Dawn is free at the moment. So you can go in there and download it and have fun. But I'm not going to talk about it. We're going to move on from there. Uh, Eli, you back yet? Still phasing in and out? Am I back? I don't know. I hear you. Okay. You're here now with your face now, but it looks like you're back now. So I guess we can go forward. So, um, okay. uh, oh, you, you're good now. You're good now. Okay. Yeah, I've been hearing you the whole time, but I guess you can't hear me. So I don't know if it's my end or what. No. Oh, you, you're good now. You were a second ago, you were just like, uh, but you're back now. Okay. Yeah. So let's uh go to the next part of the podcast. Like I said, this comic book. We're talking about the comic books. I'm just going to jump into it. And shoot. Uh yes, I let me go first. Let me go first. All right. I'll let you have some fun for the next time with it. Because this is a, this is the X-Men book, because we always start off with the X-Men book. That's what we do. But honestly, guys, this is an interesting X-Men book. It's still in the whole Hickman continuity bullshit, whatever's going on. Like this is a very interesting book. This is Way of X number one. Let's see if I can get this bad boy going. So what this this is just like this is a nightcrawler book. Okay. Like it's just about him. So let's see if I can get to it. Uh, yeah. So the book starts off with uh, Professor X having a nightmare. You know, he's having a nightmare about some demon uh, that's saying, betrayed. You have been betrayed. You know, he's like, oh, I can't make it. You know, so he has. So he does his telepathic thing where he talks to Nightcrawler. And Nightcrawler is just like, uh, if you're talking to a priest, it's late at night. See the two reasons. You either about to sin or you about to die. Which one is it? He's like, no, nah, just. Contact you seeing what's going on. You know, he's like, okay, cool. Because he sent Nightcrawler on a mission to a church in Venice. Now, this church in Venice is uh controlled by Orcus. And you know, Orcus is that that government team with shield agents and aim agents and hydra agents, stuff like that, specifically made uh form to kill, you know, kill all mutants on, on the planet. And what they're doing, they have this church set up where it teaches nothing but mutant hate, it has nothing but X-Men villains in there. Dark Phoenix, Mega Red, Apocalypse, you know, and Nightcrawler has like his mutant team of teenagers with him, you know, like Pixie and whoever the fuck else I don't know, like that. And one of the mutants, Pixie, is getting teased. She's getting teased because they said, Oh, you haven't had your first time yet. Like, my first time, yeah, you haven't died yet. So you're not one of us. She's like, No, I can do it. And they're like, So <laughs> while they're doing all that shit, they interrupt the meeting, they find out that uh, they're having church right at the moment then they get ambushed by some people and and here's the thing while they're beating them up one pixie like one of the guys just comes out with a, with a, a shotgun and a gas mask and pixie just stands right in front of his face and she just teases him and he just shoots her in the face just like fuck you know one of the other mutants cell phone the whole thing he live streamed it <laughs> you know to the other mutants control he was like that shit was awesome you know, because the thing is, the kid, the kid mutant, since death doesn't matter anymore, they don't care. They want to die. And Nightcrawler's like, okay, this is fucked up. We need to do something about this, you know. Uh, and the rest of the mutants are just completely, I mean, the humans are completely fucked up. They just saw a mutant just die in front of them. And like, it don't really matter. We're just going to bring it back anyway. So it's like, okay, cool. Um, so they teleport and some other shit happens. I don't care. They talk to Magneto throwing a birthday party. Bert, Magneto does not care. Uh, and he T and Nightcrawler and Magneto just have a conversation. Just like Magneto, we need to have a conversation. We need to talk. Uh, he was like, "Are you talking about your uh, your precious, your precious?" And he like, "Wait, didn't you say you were going to start a religion or something like that?" You know, like uh, eventually, but I haven't got the whole works of it yet. He was like, "Well, don't you like look? We don't care about that. We live, we live past death, so nobody cares about your dusty ass God. You know. Uh, plus, isn't he a fan of res resurrection anyway?" You know, you're too busy looking for serpents. You can't enjoy eating. And so yeah, everybody's just teasing Nightcrawler because he's pretty much the only religious mutant on Krakoa. And then he meets this other mutant called Lost. That he just says, I'm lost. Uh, and tonight, Lost is supposed to go to the Crucible. And the Crucible, since Apocalypse is doing a, a, the Crucible anymore, Magneto is doing it. So let's just cut to that. Oh, and it's always passages through the book of X, whatever like that. So while everything is going on, Nightcrawler is writing his Bible. 
you know, and we're gonna go to the crucible. And Magneto is just fucking up this mutant. He was like, Tell me your name, tell me your name. I'm lost, I'm lost. And then while Lost is just getting her ass just kicked, she sees Nightcrawler in the in the crowd and she says, You, you were supposed to be one of the kind ones. I came to you first because I was hoping that you would end my suffering peacefully, not with this madness that's going on right now, because Magneto is just butchering her, you know. Um, so yeah, all that is going on. And let's get to the end. Point is, the reason Professor X had called Nightcrawler in the middle of the night because he has a special mission for, for Nightcrawler. He was like, look, I can't trust anybody with this information. I can only trust you because if I trust anybody else, they're going to go in with full force. And that will not be good. So there's some weird shit going on. Uh, Krakoa right now needs you to investigate because you can talk down the person that's doing this weird shit. And he'd be like, why don't you do it, Professor X? He'd be like, because even though I may be a lot of things, Nightcrawler, one thing I am is a shitty dad. So that should tell you who's the main bad guy they're about to fight. So we go right to the end, and it's Legion. So oh, shit. Legion is causing all the bullshit going on right now. So uh, interesting book. I kind of flew through it. But the whole thing really pretty much deals with religion, everybody making fun of Nightcrawler for even having a religion, when the X-Men pretty much consider themselves gods. So they're like, why should we even have a religion? So the whole book and every every other passage, every other panel is pretty much Nightcrawler writing in his Bible about what you should do and what you shouldn't do. Uh, while the every mutant on the on the island is pretty much making fun of him. So yeah, I get a book of I get a 4.5 out of 5. It's a strong book. I will keep up with this book and see where it's going and see if the the thread still going with Nightcrawler. So, yeah. So, uh, what right. you got next? I guess I'll do, doing Marvel, I'll do Alien 2. Okay. Number 2. Since Marvel has Alien now. Um, so this two. is, uh, yeah. Marvel now owns the rights to Alien and they are doing Alien comics. Um, this has, uh, what's his name? Gabriel. I can't remember his last name. He's a he's a retired security army merc guy that works for Whalen Utani, the company that's experimenting on aliens. And he worked for some space lab. He was a security force. He was on a security force. So he knew all the, the Whalen Utani top secret shit. His son is part of some revolution group that is, you know, down with Whalen Utani, exposed the secrets, you know. Um, anti-government kind of group, revolution group. The last issue, they went and uh, stormed the laboratory, found all the aliens, and then, you know, to be continued. This picks up, um, they lost contact with everybody on the lab. So, dude is getting called out of retirement to go back to the lab and check on things with a couple of mercs. And he does. He goes there. They find the lab all fucked up. People are dead. Um, everyone's gone. The alien, all the alien samples have been let loose. There's a fight with the. Uh, um, they get attacked by some of the face huggers, you know, um, and then an alien shows up at the end and kills the guy, and then says to be continued. So, so an alien finally showed up. Okay. An alien finally showed up on the last page. Um, Full grown xenomorph. Um, it was very fast paced. I was, I, I, I was into it. I gotta admit, I was into it. Um, and then it ended really, I'm like, oh shit. And then to, you know, next month, I'm like, oh shit, that's it. So, <laughs> um, it was a little disappointed that it, that there was the lack of aliens again. Um, but it was pretty fast paced. I must admit it's just, it ended really quickly. Like, oh shit. So they got me, uh, so three out of five, I'm probably going to get the next issue just to see what happened. I mean, it is – this one picked up the pace and moved it now, along. Let me ask you this. Yeah. Is this kind of like a limited series or – I'm not I'm not sure what, what they're doing, um, what's going on. Um, they do find – they did find a survivor on uh, the some, – some woman they found on that lab. And he's like, where's my son, blah, blah, blah. She's like, I don't know. Men just came in shooting and blowing up shit, and the aliens got loose, and I've been in hiding, and blah 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 blah. And then an alien comes and rip, you know. Again, the lack of gore—you don't get to see much. It's all in silhouettes, as you can see, as you can see right here. 
It's yeah, all it's so, so. Oh, shit. oh, that's you. I screwed up. Okay, there we go. <laughs> yeah. So the the tail go imp, he gets impaled by the alien tail. Um, but you don't get to see the blood because it's all in the shadows. But it, it's a suggested, yeah, here's the alien. Great art. The art is really cool. Ripped out his rib cage and shit. So and then that's it. Then to be next month or next reunion. So that's pretty cool. Right, who who's the artist? Who is the art? Let me go check. Yeah, that looked pretty good. Um, we have Salvador Lacro La, La Roca. I, I, I oh yeah, 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 that guy. Yeah. And yeah. Guru, Guru Effects is doing the colors. Okay, but so, yeah, Salvador La Roca. Yeah, he's like Mar. Yeah, yeah, Marvel puts him on their guys when they when they want. He did yeah. a bunch of Star Wars shit. Yeah, he, it's good. I mean, art. Yeah, and that's the thing. It alien art. Aliens are hard. Xenomorphs are hard. You know, so you, you you if you can pull off a good xenomorph, you know, yeah, the comic then yeah. is pretty good. Probably going to be pretty good. It's yeah, just you know, yeah. you get the guy that did Squirrel Girl to do this. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this 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 picked it up. This picked up the pace a little, and it just ended abruptly. I was like, oh, that's it, and I was like, shit, okay. So yeah, three out of five. I, they haven't lost me yet, so we'll see. Cool. Okay, let me see where we are. Okay, so next book I'm going to do is Justice League number sixty. Oh, like I, I said, this. This is, I did. I did read this. You did? Oh, Justice League. I meant Avengers. Sorry. <laughs> Same, <laughs> Same shit. shit. Whatever. Same, Same shit. Thing, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Like I said, this is the second uh, book in Brian Michael Bendis' run. So we're going to start off where we're going from there. So basically, how it starts off where it last left off is that Black Adam has tracked Naomi. And basically saying, who are you? Where'd you get the powers? Uh, and Naomi's like, well, what the hell are you doing here? And she's telling her friends, get out of here, because, you know, Black, Black Adam is a big-ass villain, you know. And before they can do it, Black Adam just disappears, and you see this red and blue streak, like, wait, what the hell happened? And she was like, look, over the sky, it's a bird. It's Black, it's Superman. And Black Adam's like, what the, f don't touch me. <laughs> you know, he's like, Superman, what the hell are you doing? He was just like, I use it uh, by those innocent people. And I had to find out what the hell was going on. He was like, look, I wasn't trying to do anything. I was trying to get information. You know, he was like, okay, cool. So then Naomi goes up and flies with him, with them. And they just all start talking. And Black Adam is just like, who the hell are you? Where are your power? I mean, how'd you get your powers? And where are you from? You know, and uh, how, why are you so important that Superman would dare lay his hands on me? You know, because he didn't say it, he just like, because he know what Superman knows I will fuck him up, you know. Uh, so Naomi just just like, okay, she goes back to the Hall of Justice and she tells everybody was where she came from, what she's doing, what all the stuff like that, all the Just League just sitting around, stuff like that, impressed. Uh, she's like, yeah, I'm like Omega level, I'm like super fucking powerful. And Flash is like, uh, with the Justice League, there's nothing you can do that we haven't already seen, you know. Uh, and while they're talking, you know, they get some information. They find out that that bad guy Brutus is from her world, you know, where she's from, the world that got destroyed and shit like that. And Black Widow just like, uh, are we going to talk about him? Like, him who? Him. Black Adam. Like, Superman brought Black Adam back to the Hall of Justice. It's like, why the fuck is he here? He is a bad guy. So we need to get the fuck out of here. And Batman's just like, uh, Clark, a word. We need to have a conversation. So while they're doing that, Everybody's just like, well, okay, I don't think you should have him here. And Batman just cuts to the chase. Uh, Clark wants to invite him to the team. And everybody's like, wait, what? And Superman's like, yeah, because <laughs> Batman knows what I'm thinking. Uh, but I think we should invite Black Adam to become a member of the Justice League. And, you know, uh, and Green Arrow's just like, man, don't do that. Don't do what? Don't do that Superman thing. <laughs> he was like, because anybody that disagrees with you seems like an asshole. So, of course, I got to agree with you that we should invite Black Adam to the team, you know. So they go do their thing. And I'm trying to see what else. And, oh, yeah, they they find Hippolyta in Central City. She just fought Brutus. And we're going to cut to the end. Brutus has left. She tracked him here. He disappeared somewhere. Fought the Amazons. They left. And, you know, they and Hippolyta was thinking, like, maybe we should, you know, team up with like that. But then she... She sees the Justice League and she sees Black Adam getting off the, the Justice League plane or whatever. She's like, what the hell is he doing here? And he was like, hello, Hippolyta. Long time. 
I haven't seen you in a while. And she just flies off. And everybody's just like, wait a minute. Did Black Adam and Hippolyta have a thing or whatever? You know. But anyway, Batman has cracked the case. He figured out how to find Brutus. Uh, he tells Flash to build his cosmic treadmill uh, to do a thing. So he built a cosmic treadmill. He has it all labeled with their names on it. You know, patent pending, stuff like that. So they all get on there. He, They're able to track where her home planet is. They go there and Naomi wakes up by herself. She finds no other Justice League members there. It's just her and that's it. Uh, the end. It's Justice League Dark Story, which I don't care about, but yeah, that's what's going on right now. So, all right, still a cool story. Moving fast pace. I think Bendis has found his stride. I haven't seen Bendis this, you know, energetic since the Avengers run he had back in whenever the fuck. You know, so that's that's my opinion. You know, all right. He, I, just he's re- I, I just realized I didn't share out the link till now, so I. Just- I just, oh, shared, so. I just shared out the <laughs> link. <laughs> Get in the chat, y'all. Smash that like button. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh man. So yeah, so what, what you got next? Um, I let me share the screen. I'm gonna do this is my pick of the week. Because this shit's dope. Okay. Um, Orphan and the Five Beasts number two. Orphan and the Five Beasts number um, two. Hold up, before we go to let's let's go to calls and see what they're talking about. Let's see. Uh, application window. Uh, I love the fast pace of Bendis. Yeah, ben, Bendis is really moving with this one. So, yeah. Oh, uh, Let me get you going. Oh, hold on. Let me get you right there. Boom. Okay. Yeah. Doing that. Uh, let's see. Is it this? Oh, no. No, that. Okay. Can you see that? Is yeah, it switching? Yeah, yeah. Is it yeah, switching yeah. and shit? Yeah, it's switching. Yeah, you you good. You, you okay. pick them with reach. Okay. okay, cool. So this is uh, James Stokoe. I should really find out how to pronounce this guy's name because he's a dope ass. I'm sure he's <laughs> <laughs> But he's doing an awesome book. So he's writing and directing, or directing, and he's writing and drawing this. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so this is his ode to Kung Fu movies. This is basically Five Deadly Venoms. Um, and, uh, there's a, an old master who taught these cool kung fu styles to five different uh, students to fight a bunch of bandits. Well, the bandits, they fought the bandits, but then they all got corrupted with greed and became criminals themselves. Now his le- his last dying wish is you know, to tell his last student, this chick, I forget her name, sorry, um, to go out and find all these old students and kill them. So that's what she's done. Um, she went and found the first bandit, Named Thunder Thighs. This guy, oh, you can see his legs. They're totally huge and muscular. He can crush horses between his legs. You know, like sparrows. I don't know the chick was named Thunder Thighs. thighs. Okay. No, the dude's named Thunder Thighs. Um, <laughs> and this is the fight. This, 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 this is basically they do. They do go into a flashback about how he was taught, how the master taught this guy how to be Thunder Thighs, and how he went out and slayed all the bandits but then after a while he basically took over the bandits gang and then turned him into like robin hood where he was like stealing from the rich and giving to the poor but then after a while he just got too greedy he's like fuck it i'm just gonna rip off everybody so then he became this warlord so this is the fight and it is a crazy ass fight you know he's like kicking over buildings and shit you know It's yeah, he's got these really strong legs and can kick the shit out of everything. But she's really quick with a spear. And she boom. Here we go. She like slices him and dices him and cuts him in half. And okay. um but that but wait. Oh yeah, see like in the samurai movies, yeah, they don't yeah. know they, they don't. So she cuts off the top of his top the top half of his body, it falls over, but it turns out this dude's got a little brain inside. He's like, that was the, that was all my fat. You, you, you <laughs> took right around all my, all my excess, all my excess weight. And then now it's just his legs and his little ass skeleton. You can see kind of sticking through the top of his body. So he's still kicked. There's still big ass fight. She, he's like kicking all these poles at her and shit. But then she gets her, uh, her homie who's on a horse and they end up like throwing the spears into both of his legs and rip them apart so draw and quarter them so as you can see this it's totally brutal 
This is metal as fuck. So there are the two horses ripping them apart. <laughs> well, damn. And yeah, this is why I love this. I mean, his art is super detailed and crazy. Um, reminds me of Jeff Darrow. And uh, yeah, so this and so he kill, she kills Thunder Thighs and the gang is like, okay, you're our new leader. And he says, okay, well, now we got to go find the other uh, bandits. And that's where we get to be continued. And this is a five out of five for me. This is great. I love this. This is dope. So, um, yeah. Check this shit out. Orphan and the Five Beats. Beasts. <laughs> yeah, I, I see that. Our artwork is crazy. Yeah. So. There's a guy named Thunder Thighs. So Thunder Thighs didn't die, right? Oh, he's dead. He got drawn and quartered. That oh, was okay. him getting he ripped was, apart. He, <laughs> he got <laughs> cut in half, then then ripped apart by horses. Oh damn! <laughs> Hope he come back, but you know, maybe Thunder Thighs Jr. I'm just something. wondering what the next bandits can. There's four more bandits. There's four more styles. So oh, wow. <laughs> I'm wondering what the hell who's next. So All right. yeah, crazy book. So book I, book I'm going to do my last book I'm doing for tonight is uh the Mighty Valkyries number one, which is another Marvel book. Um, uh, like I said, this is Jane Foster doing some more Valkyrie shit. But however, the Valkyrie from you know the MCU is in this book. They got two Valkyries running around, so it's a buddy cop Valkyrie book going on right now. So Tessa Thompson's yeah. in it. Yeah, basically her character's in it also. So you got Jane Foster and her. They're both doing a thing. So yeah, so based on how it starts off. Uh now, first thing I just want to say, like the artwork in this book is beautiful. Let me just zoom out. The artwork is beautiful, insane. That's the main reason I got this book to begin with. But anyway, what's going on? Jane Foster is, you know, back doing her day job. She's helping out pay stuff like that. And she gets stopped by a doctor. The doctor she gets stopped by is Dr. Stephen Strange. Dr. Strange just works there, <laughs> you know. And she basically tells her, hey, there was some beast that was uh, charged some shit in New York last night. He's just talking about just out in the open. Just like, don't care who, who cares. And then they they hear somebody eavesdropping on him. He's like, uh, change the subject. Talk about something else. They're like, oh, we need 95 cc's of gram. Like, eh, make it 100. Because she's trying to listen in to what they're talking about. They're talking about some superhero shit. And Jane Foster doesn't want her to know. So uh, they go back, and she's down there, and she's like, I need to find some place. She talks to her, to the coroner or mortician, whatever you want to call it. And he gives her the address to this mortician bar that they hang out at you know and she was like if you go down there don't tell anybody that i sent you you know and then it, it, look at the, the art is amazing man look at that and jane foster never looked as good i mean other than natalie portman you know i was talking about in the comics <laughs> you know? uh, and the name of the bar they go to is the remain what she goes to is remains of the day she goes there and she's like oh shit so it's nothing but coroners and morticians and stuff there so she goes there and she's like, I want an embalmer's brew, <laughs> you know, and then she gets hit on by this guy. He like, I'll have the abracadaver, please. Uh, and he hits on her and he actually he doesn't throw a corny line at her. He gets a line and catches a pity. He's like, did you know Jimmy Carter uh, sent his jacket to the cleaners and had his de nuclear detonation codes in his pocket? You know, she's like, OK, well, that's better than the normal, you know, what's your sign? You know, so she sat down to have a drink with him and shit, you know. Um, Hella shows up, don't care. She's back. Oh, that's the funny thing about Hella. Like she was, she's supposed to be dead in the Guardians of the Galaxy book, but she's just back because she's just whatever. So she's still having a conversation with him. And then she hears something that she, you know, she like people that can't tell the between the labyrinth and the wall and a maze. Uh he like, well, why would they want? Why just break down the walls? And she's like, so you wanted the drink? She's like, no, nah, let's get out of here. And so they decide, like, okay. So, and then while they're walking, he was like, so this Nordic dreamboat hunk thing you got going on, you're just doing that for my, for my liking? Like, what are you talking about? I know who you are, Loki. So it's Loki the whole time pretending to be that dude trying to hit on Jane Falkers. He was like, okay, you got me. He was like, because you were acting too much like Loki, this I could tell, you know. Uh, so the thing is, there's this wolf thing that's going around attacking people, and the wolf thing shows up. Look at the thing. It's not Fenra. It's Fenris children or Fenris baby, child, whatever like that. So Loki just like, why is that thing trying to kill you? Is that your friend? You're like, no, that's my grandchildren. You're like, yo, you what? Long yeah, because isn't yeah, isn't that in like an actual Norse mythology? Loki's right. Like, Norse mythology. Yeah. Fenra is Loki's. Yeah. I don't know. Kid. Like son. Loki, I think He's is Fenris' mother. 
He's the father of the wolf. He's uh, no, I think he's the mother of the wolf. <laughs> no, I, in Amon Amarth, that band who sings all about Norse mythology, they have a song yeah. called "Father of the Wolf," and it's about okay. Odin. You're right. You're right. You're right. I think he. <laughs> He's mother of somebody. I think Odin's horse, <laughs> but whatever. Anyway, this wolf is the wolf's uh, Fenra's son, daughter, whatever. So, and they're coming to kill Loki, you know. And Loki is just like, you got to protect me. You got to save me. So Valkyrie does, you know, Jane Foster does her all weapon and shit like that. Look at this panel, man. This shit is awesome. This is fucking amazing. I don't know who's drawing this shit, but this is just an awesome panel right no, here. No, like so Alex Ross and shit. <laughs> it, it almost looked like like some Kingdom Come shit. So the the wolf is trying to eat Loki and shit like that, and Loki just like, look, you got to take this thing and wrap it around him because if you don't, he won't stop. It's the only thing that can stop him. Attacking him won't do anything. So he gives Jane Foster the thing, and as soon as Loki does that, he dips out. <laughs> He's like, good luck, Jane Foster. <laughs> While the wolf you know goes after her, but then he throws the thing at her. So Loki actually did give her something to yeah, stop the wolf. Yeah. yeah. So then then the wolf just like I was going, I wasn't gonna eat him, I was just gonna hurt him a little bit. And then the wolf starts turning into a person, you know. Uh she was like, Who are you? You know, and she said, My name is Manigar, um Haiti, um Skull, you know, you can call me more. And it's Loki's grandson. And okay. that's the thing. More hella shit, don't care. Okay. <laughs> so let's go to the Valkyrie, the, the MCU Valkyrie. So apparently, she, I guess she was in a Guardians of the Galaxy book, something like that. So she's in space doing spaceship. And she's on a planet where you can talk to an Oracle, Oracle for a price that would tell you anything for a price. Past, present, future, shit you don't know, shit you want to know, whatever. So she goes there. Pay a fee, but you only ask one question. So she goes there, like I said, it's it's the MCU Valkyrie. She's a she's a thing now. Oh, uh, let's cut to the okay, so, so she meets the Oracle and she asks the Oracle. Um yeah, she asks the Oracle. I got one question. Well, I, I want to know what's my name and how did I get here? Because she doesn't know her name. She has amnesia from her days as being a Valkyrie, because she Basically, every Valkyrie has been wiped out of the planet in War of the Realms except her because she wasn't there. So she asked the Oracle, what's my name? And she was like, your name has been lost in the galaxies for eons. Your name was given to you by a woman you love, a woman I raised. I know who you are. Your name is Runa. So that's her name. So she is Runa the Valkyrie. And she says, the next question I have, will my ex break your dome? You're like, yes. And it counted down. Three, two. So she's about to break the Oracle out. And three, two, one, be continued. So, yeah. So, the MCU Valkyrie's name is Runa. That's her name. Okay. Never, she's a new thing. So, so this is a, I don't know if it's an anthology book or a buddy book or a team book or whatever like that. I'm pretty sure they will, yeah, Art of the Valkyries. I like that. That's, I think that's a song. But, yeah. Um, but, yeah, that's all I got. Like I said, awesome artwork. The best artwork I've seen in Marvel for a while actually since the last valkyrie book the last valkyrie book had awesome art so yeah but that's what i got so any any of the books you got i i, I got this godzilla book cool okay IDW. godzilla monster protectors monster and protectors uh it looked like some one. captain planet type shit what am i it was a very it's very kitty friendly okay um, it's basically a bunch of kids so this kid is doing like a he's got he's got like a live stream going he's talking about how he saved the world from Godzilla or something like that and then it goes into how this company is doing some sort of clean energy some they got some new clean energy thing but it's giving off radiation that is fucking up the uh, the krill the, 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 the those little crab things that the whales eat which at attracted Godzilla and Godzilla came up and fucked up the island and um and, and yeah and then something about they're talking about how uh the kids the kids all talking on his life so it's like it's told in kind of flashback because he's doing a live stream or whatever and he's talking about how godzilla is like a cure for a disease earth's cure he's like the, a medication or an antidote for the earth and whenever there's a virus godzilla shows up 
and fights the virus. And, um, you know, pretty cool commentary, I thought. You know, and they're like, oh, let's hope Godzilla never thinks humans are the, the, the disease because that would be bad. And it then, out, yeah. yeah, and then the Mothra, Mothra's egg and the little Mothra fairies show up at the end. Um, and then it says to be continued, there's the Mothra. And they got a name. I always forget their name. What are they called? The, oh, the Shobijin or whatever. I can't pronounce it. The little Mothra fairies who sing a song and Mothra hatches and shit. That's to be continued. Um, this was very, it seemed like it was really geared for kids. The art was really lighthearted. Like, look, yeah. So this is very cartoony, lighthearted. Yeah, I was like, yeah, art. very kept in play, you know, yeah. Hanna-Barbera. Like it, it, it feels like it's geared for kids and it just made me wonder, do kids, like, are kids actually reading comic books? Or are they being no, forced? Not are, at they, all. are they being forced to read comic books by their parents? Like here, we're gonna get you into comics. Read this. <laughs> I don't think that either. Now remember that Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur book? Yeah, it yeah, just yeah. lasted like forever, and nobody read that shit. Apparently, it was like some kind of scholastic school thing, where oh, I guess okay. the so maybe they're trying to get in on that. I could see this being collected and being sold at a scholastic school fair. Yeah. Because I have yeah. seen graphic novels pop up at my kids' schools during their those school book fairs and yeah. shit. So, so this I, seems I like they're trying to get in on that, right? Yeah, because but but this there's a lot of talking. There's a lot like here the scene where they're just talking about you know the energy and the different periodic tables and you know the the elements. I that loot and plunder, but that's a uh, Captain Planet nowhere. Yeah, I mean, like, are kids gonna get into that? So I don't know. It was a, it was kind of like the seems geared for kids, but I don't know if kids would actually dig it. I don't know if kids actually give a shit about Godzilla, like, like we do, or like not even you, me. <laughs> I mean, well, you gotta remember, Godzilla versus Kong is a thing now, so it's a resurgence. Yeah. You know? So that maybe, but um. I don't know. It, it just seemed very. I, I don't know if it's my 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 cup of tea, you know. Um, yeah. So I'll give it a shit. I'll give it a three out of five. It was all right, you know. It wasn't what I was expecting, you know. And it just made me think, you know. Okay, they we moved to Tokyo. I'm like in a in a in a universe where Godzilla exists. Why would you move to any populated area? But you know what? That's my thing with Godzilla movies, you know. Every time in a Godzilla movie and they're like, we have spotted Godzilla in Tokyo Bay or wherever. And you're like, all the people, let's go to the baseball game. They all go out and pump. Like, why don't you go hide? You know? I, <laughs> I mean, did start, they tell everybody or did they just keep it to themselves? <laughs> no, they're like, no, it's like, it's a broad, like, like a tornado warning. Like, we have spotted Godzilla has been sighted off the coast. Seek shelter. Let, let's, let's go to the carnival. <laughs> and I always thought that was kind of stupid, you know, like these people are stupid. But you know what? After this pandemic, I could totally believe that now. That people are that Florida stupid. Florida would be the first place to get destroyed. Yeah. <laughs> like in the like in the new Godzilla, like Godzilla versus Kong, like that for they doesn't he attack Florida at the beginning? Yeah. That's the first place you get. <laughs> yeah. So you I can't can believe tell that. Me now. What you, Godzilla. <laughs> yeah. In a world where a big giant threat is happening and uh, people hey the, the, go go find shelter no they won't let's go check it out <laughs> godzilla is a hoax <laughs> All yeah. this shit. my freedom my, uh, yeah you're taking away my, my body, rights my in public. yeah, yeah my fucking <laughs> don't take away my freedom to go to the park right while, God, while godzilla's stomping through it <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i don't know like i said about three out of five and uh yeah and um, oh, you're booked out. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the other other book I got on here was Post Americana, that dope ass book by uh, uh, Steve Scrochi. You know, um, really cool art, and it's like a post apocalyptic tale, making a lot of political uh, commentary on it. It's dope. Another five out of five. I love that book too. It's probably my favorite book of the year. Very detailed. Really detailed art, very violent and bloody, right up my alley. Post Americana, we're we up to number five now. Yeah, it's great. Um, and that that's it. That's all I got. Cool, cool. Well, uh, like I said, if you listen this long, definitely like, share, subscribe. If I sound any differently, it's because my mic broke seconds before we started recording. So I had to find another way to get this done. 
have no idea how it's going to turn out. Probably won't sound any different. This is probably me being anal, but that's just me. Um, and like I said, we got other podcasts could, we got going on. We got you this could piece like of lie about it and say I was slay. I was dropping mad verses and I totally slayed the mic. And that's oh why yeah, I don't the mic no starts smoking. Yeah, yeah man, I, I, I uh, my, my I spit so hard my mic broke. <laughs> <laughs> and the headphones just like. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, like I said, and there will be a top five this week also on Tuesday. I won't yeah. be there. Uh, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and say why I'm not going to be there because I know you guys are going to clown me on the show anyway. I have to work because there's a co-worker that's having surgery and I'm the only person that knows how to fill their position. So, yeah, I'm going to be doing that for the next two weeks and stuff like that. So we'll figure ends. it out. I also got to make them ends. Pretty much. But here's the thing. I may or may not, if I'm not too busy enough, I may come in my top five while y'all record. All right. Yeah, there you go. But I can't make any promises. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, like I said, until then, this is Leroy. This is Eli. We'll talk to you guys next week. Same bullet time, same bullet channel. To the pop song that I'm singing, ding a ringing, funky beats ringing, everybody swinging in the place as I keep the J's easy Y style, R and B mixing it with the hip hop swing beat, champagne in my hand, it won't be long till I'm gone. It's just the same old song. It's just the freestyle. Meanwhile, we keep the beat kicking. Sweat dripping. Girlies in the limo eating chicken. Oops, don't get the grease on your pantyhose. I love you, Rover. Move over. I gotta blow my nose. Sneezing, but still I'm pleasing to all of Slimmies. Pull out my Jimmy. Time to get busy with a Jenny. If it's good and plenty, don't you know? There I go, there I go, there I go. But I don't go nowhere without my gym hat. What I'm rapping is if she's clapping, then I'm strapping because I'm smarter than that. And then, girlie, maybe we can get along. Cutie after cutie. It's just the same old song. It's the same old song, y'all. Same song. Uh, it's just the same old song. It's the same song. The freaky dicky, the squeaky wicky up and down. Well, as a matter of fact, I'll be right back. I gotta take a licky. So I'm draining entertainers. But I got fame and the bases I touch. Too much for me to try to be naming. Hey, yo, he saw me on cable and grip. I busted in and I was going to win. I caught Gable back in Oakland. It's the same old song. It's sporty, shorty, same freckles and hat, drinking the same four. Hypothetical, political, lyrical, miracle whip. Just like butter. My rhymes are legit, cause I'm a humpty. Not humpty dumpty, but humpty hump. Here a hump, there a hump, everywhere I'm humpty hump. Uh, shut up and just listen. Not dissing, don't get me wrong. But to me it's just the same old song So just watch, cause my name is Shock I like to rock and you can't stop this Tupac, go ahead and rock now this Now I clown around when I hang around with the underground Girls used to frown, say I'm down when I come around Gas me and when they pass me they used to diss me Harass me, but now they ask me if they can kiss me Get some fame, people change, wanna live their life high Same song, can't go wrong if I play the nice guy Claiming fame must have changed now that we became strong I remain still the Why same, too? cause it's the same song It's the same song Oh.